Chapter 9, Conflict Resolution and Its Effects on Economic Policy. When I came to, there was a damp paper towel over my face. I'm sorry, Arnold said. I thought I eased into it, but I guess the shock. I thought of a really important question. I was still woozy. I'm still not sure I heard you right. Did you say I now have over $50,000? Are you going to faint again? No, I don't think so. Then yes, you are now worth that. Where is it? In your account, under my name, but in your special account. Can I see it? Of course. I have your account information on the computer. He turned to his keyboard and tapped a few keys. No, the money. Can I see the money? He shook his head. It's not like that. First, you'd have to sell all of your investments and get a check. Then you'd have to take the check to the bank and cash it in. Then yes, you could see the money. And when you sell, then you owe taxes on your capital gains. And at the end of the year, capital gains is what they call profit you made from your initial investment. Oh, I didn't quite follow all that, I thought. So, I don't really have the money, I said slowly. I have a computer screen and numbers and stocks and things, but not the actual money. That's right, that's how it works. You or I, acting for you, will reinvest the money in safe stocks, which will give you what's called a diversified portfolio. So if one thing goes down, another might go up to cover you. But it's all there and you can cash it in any time you want, except... Except what? I smelled a rat. Right now the money appears to be mine because legally you can't invest in the market because you're too young. You have to go through an adult. And I'm a little uncomfortable with this because first of all, I'm not your legal guardian. And second, since the money appears to be mine and the government, will want me to pay taxes on it, and that shouldn't be my responsibility to pay taxes on your money. So what do we do? Soon, very soon, we talk to your parents and get them involved. Mom, I thought, Dad, I have something to tell you. I've been mowing lawns, and I've been mowing a lot of lawns, and I have 50,000, please pass the green beans, and by the way, I have 50,000 breakfast over toast. Mom, Dad, you know how I've been mowing lawns every day? Well, guess what? I have no... We have something like 50,000 and change. There's something else. What on earth could it be? How could anything in the world top this? What is it? As I said, I put your money in this walleye stock, but I should remind you not all your money. I thought it might be good to do some investing for fun. It isn't fun, I thought, to have over $50,000? So there was this kind of fund for people interested in sports, and I thought you might like to invest in that. He trailed off and I studied him. Is something wrong? He shook his head and looked at the rain. I couldn't believe it was still raining, that it was the same day that we'd been talking for an hour or so. Part of me was listening and part of me was imagining what the money would do to help my parents, what it would buy. I misread the explanation on the fund, he said and sighed. Usually in this kind of fund, a lot of investors pool their money and perhaps buy a baseball team or build a stadium, but it didn't turn out that way. How exactly did it turn out? It turns out that you own 100% interest in a heavyweight boxer who lives nearby. I own him? Not really the person, of course. You're sponsoring him, and if he does well, you split the purse. He has a purse? What kind of prize fighter carries a purse? That's a figure of speech. The purse is the prize money, his winnings. What's his name? Joseph, Arnold said. Joseph Powdermilk, Jr. I have the specs in the computer and I can run you a printout if you like. Sure, I'd like to know more about him. Good, because he's due here in about 15 minutes. He called last night and wants to meet his sponsor and thank him. Arnold shook his head. Look, I'm really sorry about this. If you lose, I'll cover it, all right? And as for meeting him, well, he asked about his sponsor and without thinking I gave him this address. So if you want, you can leave right now and miss it. I shook my head. No, and if we lose on this, it's not your fault. Five, six weeks ago, I was sitting in my yard wondering about an inner tube. Now I'm a thousandaire or something. You think I'm going to complain? Some would, he sighed. Some have. What if we'd lost? Then we would have lost $40. That's what we started with, right? We lose the whole walleye thing, and all we've really lost is that, the original $40. Well, that's a healthy way to look at it. There was a sudden clatter in front of the house and an old station wagon rumbled to a stop. It sat almost wheezing and the driver's side door opened with a great deal of difficulty and a man got out. I say man, but this person looked more like a living mountain than a man. I see it, Arnold said, but I don't believe it. How did he get in the car? He was wearing a big sweatshirt and sweatpants and as he moved up the sidewalk 
to the door, his step was amazingly light for someone of his size, almost like a really big cat. Even though he could see us through the screen of the porch, he knocked on the screen door. Please, Arnold said, come in. A quick motion, a side slip, and he was in the door standing in front of Arnold. I'm Joseph Powdermilk, and I would like to thank you for being my sponsor. He faced Arnold and held out his hand. I have never heard such a voice that sounded like thunder a long way off. Muted but deep, rumbling. Sorry, Arnold said. Wrong sponsor. He pointed to me. This is him. He turned a mountain turning. I am Joseph Powdermilk, and I would like to thank you for being my sponsor. He held out his hand, as big as a whole ham, and I put my hand out, and it disappeared completely in his, and we shook. His touch was gentle. It's nice to meet you, I said. My name is... Just then, Pascal's truck streaked past Joseph Powdermilk's station wagon and came to a screeching halt. Pascal came running up to the porch. I knew it must be serious because it was daylight. Pascal never came out in daylight. Come right away. I got up. What's the matter? His name is Rock. He has two guys with him. He says we've got to pay him or he'll harm our workers. He plans to take over the business. What can I do? Come. If Rock doesn't meet us, the boss, he'll cause meet uh, the boss. He'll cause a lot of trouble. Come now. I hadn't taken a step before I saw Joseph Powdermilk move. I'll help. He rumbled. I'm good at this. I was out the door. Good at what? Trouble. <laughs>